hello and welcome back to my channel thank you for stopping by today thanks to my returning subscribers and if today is your first day on this channel please kindly subscribe to get notified and updated whenever i upload new videos every week by clicking on the red subscribe button below peter odenwigwe is a nigerian international footballer he outrightly told mr p of p square that he should stop rubbing people in broad daylight with his nonsense business which business is he referring to as nonsense? That is Zoom Lifestyle. Zoom Lifestyle is a registered lottery business in Nigeria, of which Peter Okoye is the CEO. Recently, he has been promoting his lottery business on Instagram, which has grown his followers drastically to over 1 million followers because most nigerian youths think that he's doing giveaway both home and abroad but it's not a giveaway it's a betting or gambling or lottery you have to gamble with your money for you to win and he always campaigns of who is going to be the next millionaire on saturday as if he's giving out a million naira but he's not giving out a million naira. What he gives out is one million naira to five winners every Saturday. That means if you stand the chance of winning, you'll be going home with 200,000 naira after betting with your 500 naira. But let's do the simple mathematics. If only 1% of his 10 million followers on Instagram plays this gamble in one month, that means we are going to have 100,000 persons gambling, of which is going to be more than 1%. But we're just saying that at the worst scenario, that is only 1% of his followers that actually gambled in a month. That means 100 persons, 100,000 persons are going to be paying 500 naira, which is 50 million naira. And what is the percentage, as in what amount goes back to the winners? Only 4 million naira. 1 million every Saturday to five persons so in a month you have only 20 winners going home with 200,000 naira i don't blame mr peter odeniwe for saying what he said he has his reason for saying it let's read his words what he told peter on instagram he said what happened to you at peter p square you are robbing people in broad daylight with that your nonsense business and now you want to take even Christmas from them. You need a fear God at all. What he's referring to there about you even want to take away Christmas from them is that this month of December 2020, Peter has extended the lottery into a daily based draw, no longer on weekly basis where the draw usually be on Saturdays and you have to gamble with 500 naira. Now you have to gamble with 1000 naira every day for you to participate. It's no longer a weekly draw. It's now a daily draw. So now there is, he wants more people to gamble every week for him to be able to make more money. And Peter Odeniwe further told him that, bro, you need to tell your kids to do that. You are better than that. Many of your songs brought me to God. No depart, please. Think and well. Be blessed. Of course, his kids cannot gamble because people are already gambling and they're enriching him and they're already storing all these things for their kids in future. And let's look at what Peter's reply to Pete, Mr. P of Pisco, his reply to Peter Odenigwe. Peter said, bro, I tried to ignore, but I am so disappointed in you. You are now close to God, does not make you to feel others are close to the devil. I own a registered and licensed lottery platform, just like every other individual does, both here and abroad. But coming to spill this rubbish, just because you feel you are now closer to God. Bro, my music never brought you close to this, your God in particular. Bro, you have been brainwashed period. You look sick and you need help. Learn to mind your business and focus on that your God and your life. Disappointed with thumbs down. And Peter Odenigwe responded, and I feel why he said Peter is rubbing people in broad daylight is because of the little boy that said he took his mom's last 500 naira to gamble, that the mother has cancer and she has been seriously sick. And luckily he won. And Peter was even praising him. So to Peter Odenigwe, he was not supposed to praise someone for stealing his mother's money to gamble. What if he didn't make it? What if he was among those that lost? That means he would have deprived his family of a day or two days meal. All because of he wanted to gamble the money. 
That was what Peter Odenigwe was trying to explain. Let's listen to his explanation. And I want to know what you guys think about the Zoom lifestyle, the betting, and if Peter Odenigwe is minding his business, like my friend M. Chiki Series was said, that hence you've brought it to social media, it's no longer a family business. It's not everybody's business. So nobody should tell me I should mind my business. So I want to know if Peter Deniway is minding his business or not. Because this business, they have been promoting it and playing it on Instagram. So it's a social media thing and everybody is free to air their opinion. I will allow you guys to listen to Peter Deniway and want to know what you think in the comment section. My bro, I didn't mean no offense, bro, to be honest. But, you know, we're brothers. And if I see my brother something not too day right, as you offered to pray for me, feeling like, you know, things not day right with me, I thought, you know, I'll do the favor back. Because what you sow is what you reap. So you pray for me, I pray for you. So you notice something like maybe... I'm pushing it too far. But I think when I watched your video about the guy that took his mom's last 500 Naira to gamble, basically. What you're doing, you're encouraging gambling. Some people win, some people lose. So he went into tears saying his mother is ill. She has cancer. She's on chemotherapy. And he said... You asked him, why is he crying? He said he took his mom's money from her account, his, her last 500 Naira, to buy a ticket. Luckily, he won. But I believe there are some guys who didn't win on that day and possibly took their dad's or mom's or friend's last money feeling like, oh, I'm going to win today because gambling is an addiction. So... In that situation, I'm not condemning your business completely, but in that situation, I think what you should have said to him, I'm saying this from my, from my heart, you should have said to him, I, you know, you, you, he's lucky today, but don't do that again. Because if he didn't win, that means they might not have a meal. They might not even have a meal that day or the next day. Because, and that's stealing. Like you have to ask your mother to take her last money to go gamble. And I believe, you know, some people borrow money to do these things. And when they're in debt, they end up in arrested. They got beaten up and all that. So that was my worry, really. And I will tell you something. In 2019, I was offered endorsement deals from um, gambling companies that were launching in Nigeria. Um, I went to God with it. I said, in Europe, people are kind of... There are regulations. They are regulated. They have more money here. But my conscience didn't let me do that in Nigeria because our people don't have money. They will go gamble their last money on Arsenal, Chelsea. And what next? They go home, beat their wives, slap their kids, you know, uh, being disappointed because you know how our country is. So I said no. And I went to God with prayer and I believe I had an answer. So I heard his voice and he said, you know, do what you want. God doesn't force us to do things. But he said, I hope you trust me with your finances. So it was a good offer. A couple of months later, through the NFF, you can ask Dayo NAB, I receive another message. And he says, Osas, there is a, a company here, like gambling company. They want to offer you something. Uh, can I pass your number? I simply said, no, Dayo, thank you. You can call him and ask. I said, no, I don't do gambling. It's not for me. I'm not condemning it. It's, it's for some people. You know, I was played, I played for Stoke City. Our sponsors are a very big gambling company here, Bet365. But they're regulated. You know, I'm sure yours is regulated to an extent. But I'm just saying from my heart, like that particular case, if he took his mom's last 500 Naira, you should have rebuked him as a brother. You would have said, you understand, like sometimes if you have free cash, you just play you know like everybody does most of my friends are footballers they all do gambling but it's a big issue here people commit suicide because of gambling it's an addiction so it's a it's a tough one i'm not condemning people doing it but if you can control it that's another thing you know the bible says don't be overtaken by something but you can do it we're allowed to drink party a little bit but it doesn't have to dominate us okay and i didn't come out with like judgment bro 
I'm coming out with grace. You know me. We were friends. Nobody like party reach me. Nobody like music reach me. You know? We all have our all have our shortcomings and I'm not coming. I'm actually coming for guys like you, guys like me, because we know, you know, we be guy men like we like our enjoyments more. But there are some things that we could do better in. I'm not judging you, not condemning you, but when I saw the video you are putting out encouraging, people are breaking bottles on their heads and dancing. And I asked you, if these were your sons, will you encourage them to do that? So this is how our Christmas should be in Nigeria now. Guys breaking bottles on their heads and dancing like crazy. I'm just saying my opinion. I don't think it's right. Maybe once a year you want to go mad, you go to somewhere and do that. But not to bring that kind of thinking into Christmas. Because, you know, it's family time. It's nice time. We're going to, I don't think we will make that day nice. So apologies if I offended you in any way. I was kind of you know, disappointing in a few other things because, you know, my heart is bleeding for Nigeria every day. And one reason why I'm supporting Trump is very simple. Lockdown means death for lots of our people. We all witnessed what was happening during uh, the the uh, crisis we recently lived through. Um, our people, some of them were falling down from roofs trying to reach palliatives just for a bag of rice. Uh, I think a, a girl, they said she fell and died. Uh, people grabbing goats and chickens and running away. Uh, the scenes from Just is what I saw. Because I have a friend of mine who grew up in Benin City with me. Uh, she lives in Just. She sent me pictures. I used to send her money. I haven't heard from her for two weeks. And I honestly hope she didn't commit suicide, to be honest. Because she hasn't messaged. Two weeks ago, I sent her 50,000 Naira to just keep herself going. Before that, I sent her some money because she has two sons. When she sent me a photo on Instagram, she had only margarine in her fridge. No bread, nothing to eat. So now she lost her two sons because the father had to take them. She's from Joss. The father had to take them because she can't look after two boys. And it's heartbreaking to see a mother uh, go away from the kids. I believe you and your brother loved your mom a lot. And we have a soft spot for our moms. So what I'm saying is he shouldn't have taken his mom's last 500 naira to go and gamble. But apologies if I offended you in any way. Um, you know, a good friend will always say some, the truth to someone. I appreciate your worry about me, that uh, you feel something is not all right. But you know what I do all day? I pray for Nigeria because our Naira has gone down. And uh, I don't see the budget for 2021. It's not looking good. It's going to be a lot of troubles in Nigeria. I read articles. Two, two million people displaced. Uh, since the lockdowns, uh, hunger will be a problem, famine will be a problem. You see bandits all over the place, robbing, uh, taking uh, women away into the forest. Uh, I think, you know, people don't see this, but I read the, new, the articles. Somebody uh, from Abuja sends me articles from Nigeria and every day it's hurting to see that, you know. We can't export petrol as we used to. So our economy will really be hit. I'm sorry again. You remain my favorite singer of all time, both of you. I'm not saying this because I want to make up with you. You were my favorite. You will remain my favorite because you were just the best. And I liked the innocent songs that you guys used to sing. And your beats are the best in the world. And the lyrics you had, they kind of had meaning. They were relevant to our society. So let's not go too far and start Americanizing because, you know, we keep our uniqueness not to conform to anyone else. That's actually what I'm trying to say. So all I'm doing now is encouraging our people. I pray for our people every day because I see harder, harder and harder times coming because our economy has taken a hit and I don't see it rebounding in the near future. God bless you, bro. And you have a half Russian wife. Say hi to her. You are not a stranger to me, as you know yourself. I appreciate your prayer. Be blessed. And I'm sorry again if I offended you in any way. Bro, you'll be my guy, man. No. Thank you so much for watching to the end. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you haven't done that. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'm going to see you guys in my next video.